1960s, they really opened up a new era of repression in South Africa. First of all, the political organizations are banned, they go underground, uh, our political leaders are imprisoned, and many people go into exile. And then, of course, the kind of cooperation that we were beginning to see by the end of the 50s uh, between black and white in terms of filmmaking becomes virtually impossible. Following the Sharpeville massacre, and the slaughter of unarmed Africans by the police, the image that South Africa had carefully created suffered a, a tremendous blow. And then it became necessary for the South African government to enlist a number of white filmmakers to refurbish the image of apartheid and to sell apartheid policies abroad. When I was 21, I was working in Johannesburg, and I made my first film, my first documentary, was made for the South African Department of Information. It was a film called The Anatomy of Apartheid. At that time, um, there were those of us who were desperately hoping to believe that there was a benevolent aspect to apartheid. To see the children well fed, the people happy and trusting, my film, Anatomy of Apartheid, which was based on what I believed then, that we were providing um, the blacks the means of independence and self-determination, um, was a very pro-black film. These outside critics do not know what apartheid is, and they refuse to find out. New homes mean new outlooks. New outlooks mean new aspirations and ambitions. That film was uh, a bit of extraordinary wishful thinking. But it was very, very important for me because it gave me something that few other white South Africans had. It gave me free access to the townships. I was so shocked by all the things that I discovered during the process of making that film. Um, but I went through a very complete political conversion.